All right, it's time to get, well, almost kind of timely with Nintendo Power Retrospectives for issue 108 of May of 1996. Yes, I'm a month behind from being out of sync, but that's all right. Our cover this issue is Ken Griffey Jr. Baseball for the N64. We had preview coverage last issue, but this time we've got the full game. In the letters column, we get stuffed to crying those horrifically violent games on all those other platforms compared to the wholesome content for the N64. Never mind the racist characters in Clay Fighter 64 or the blood and gore in the N64 Mortal Kombat games. Let's look somewhere else. In the top 30, Yoshi's story for the N64 joins the ranking. We start off with our cover game, Major League Baseball featuring Ken Griffey Jr. We get a rundown of the game modes, including 3D stadium tours. There's also notes on season mode before we get into the nitty gritty of batting, pitching, and fielding, followed by a team rundown. Strike one. Baseball games have gone a long way since the Super Nintendo and Nintendo eras, and Major League Baseball featuring Ken Griffey Jr. shows just how approachable the genre becomes once you have a 3D graphics and a 3D console. The game telegraphs where pop flyers are going to land and gives you a camera angle with eyes on the fielder who can best get the ball right away, which allows your fielding with the controller to better reflect what a fielder in the game would act, the physical game would actually be able to do. Pitching gives you more control over where the ball is going to go, and similarly, batting gives you more control over now where you're going to swing. Is it perfect? Rodriguez. No. I've had more than a few occasions, particularly when fielding a ball, ball right one. next to first base, where the fielder could just have quickly run over and manually tag the runner instead of throwing to first, but the game wouldn't let me. There's also been, on more than a few occasions, a weird delay from when I've caught the ball to when I can throw the ball, and I'm not sure why. Is this meant to reflect the situational awareness of the fielder, and maybe there's a stat on the fielder where that, that controls how long that delay that is? Important. I don't know. The designated hitter. Oh, and, and I'd also is. forgotten, but this game reminded me, what a killer lineup Strike the Mariners off. had at this time. They didn't just have Ken Griffey Jr., they had A-Rod, they had Randy Johnson pitching, and they had Edgar Martinez. Man, oh. I... The board for the, the other major blockbuster lineups out there at the time, I'd almost wonder why the Mariners didn't get make it to the World Series and still have, haven't made it to the World Series. Moving on, Rare has its own platformer on the N64 now with Banjo-Kazooie. This is just a preview, with notes on the plot, characters, enemies, attacks, and movement technique, along with all the collectibles you need to progress. We get some info on the first couple areas, but nothing specific, and I know they're going to revisit this, so I want to come back to it later. Next is Forsaken 64, which looks like a 360 or maybe 720 degrees of movement action game like Descent, but with multiple playable characters, each with their own handling and combat capabilities. We have notes of those characters, their vehicles and available weapons, along with game modes and mission types. I had it right on the dot when I compared Forsaken 64 to Descent, because this game plays like Descent. Full movement, the camera auto corrected itself to up, got the reasonably large maps considering the limitations of the N64. It's got an interesting selection of weapons, and it also sets off my motion sick something fierce. This is a game I can almost certainly only play like one level at a time. With the two levels I played in this gameplay capture session, at the end I was having to fight my stomach as well as the final boss, and I suspect it would have fared better if I'd stopped after that, after the first level finished taken a break and then come back for that second level and then been able to beat the, beat the boss. Otherwise, the controls are really great and I appreciate the configuration generally and by dexterous. Taking advantage of that aspect of the N64's controller that not as many games as should do. And it, in all though, this really made me want to pick up Forsaken Remastered if it ends up on sale on Steam or GOG or what have you to see if that plays better with my motion sickness than the N64 version. And in classified information, we have more cheats for NFL Quarterback Club 98. Our next N64 game is Iggy's Wrecking Balls. We have a full guide-ish for the game. The game looks like Marble Madness in reverse, going up instead of down, with the 
the characters having arms that let you reach up to grab the next level up on certain materials. We have notes on the characters, movement strategies, power-ups, and tips for several tracks. Oh. Iggy's Wrecking Balls is interesting. It controls pretty well, and the concept is very novel. Finding the sort of competitive racing game with a platform. Controls are a little finicky on the standard N64 controller compared to Forsaken, which uses the N64 controller flawlessly, but I do like the idea. Honestly, I could see this game getting a remake at some point, and certainly would end up on Switch Online. I bust out my Bluetooth N64 controller for that. We have some tips for some hidden levels for Quake 1, including the final boss le final level, but I've covered that game before, so we'll move on. We have an introduction to Pokemon for US audiences, though the game itself isn't out yet, but it's laying the groundwork for the big push for its eventual release. We have a preview of Fighting Dragon 64, Natsune's fighting game for the N64, which has a Tobol-esque RPG mode, but it's not out yet, so we'll put this on hold. We now have the results of the Nintendo Power Rewards, and there is not a wide selection of winners. GoldenEye 007 took the awards for Mix, Sound, Challenge, Innovation, Story, Control, Party Game, Best Bride, Egg, Creative Chaos, Hero, Villain, Bandage, Weapon, and Best N64 Game. Diddy Kong Racing took Best Racing, NFL Quarterback Club 98 took Best Sports Game, Star Fox 64 took the Golden Rumble Pack and the most annoying reward for Slippy Radio for help. Turok's Big Cheat takes Coolest Code. Harvest Moon takes Best Super Nintendo Game. And Donkey Kong Land 3 takes Best Game Boy. In Counselor's Corner, we got a whole bunch of tips for Yoshi's Story. Moving to the Game Boy, we have a Bomberman Game Boy game, and it is exactly what it says on the tin. We have notes on power-ups and game modes, plus several level maps. Well, as I gave with the description of the article, Bomberman Game Boy plays exactly what you'd expect Bomberman on Game Boy to play like. With There are some issues with the scrolling of the screen, causing some issues with tracking where enemies are on the map, causing potentially some aimless exploration, and having some sort of on-screen indicator would have been nice, but it's Bomberman. It plays exactly like Bomberman. You knew what you were getting into, more or less, when you pick this up, and it will give you what you expect. Similarly, we have a port of Harvest Moon for the Game Boy with general gameplay notes, but doing some research, this game isn't even out in Japan yet, never mind the United States, so I will save this game for later. For one of our non-ports, we have Brain Drain, a puzzle game for the Game Boy with notes on the game mechanics. So when I was perusing the article, I got the impression from it that I thought it was a matching block puzzle game. It's not. It's one where you need to rotate groups of blocks into particular formations that are shown in, at the start of the each puzzle and in the upper corner. I appreciate that they show you how they go from the original configuration of the shuffled one with the additional note that if you even if you miss the original shuffle or forget, in, s in some instances there's another way to get the solution that might even be faster than going back the way you came. Our last game of the issue is a puzzle platformer from the Game Boy with Mickey Mouse Magic Wands with an exclamation mark. The article has notes on how the puzzle mechanics and several levels work. So, Mickey Mouse Magic Wands feels like a throwback to the puzzle games of the early days of the NES. Stuff like Mylon's Secret Castle with arbitrary hidden blocks and that sort of thing. And to the point that when I was researching this, my first thought was, oh, maybe this is a Mylon Secret Castle sequel that I missed, or something like that. It got reskinned for Mickey Mouse, and not quite, but close. It is instead part of Camco's Crazy Castle series, which is also something that did not quite take off its previous incarnations and didn't grab me here. Our last game of the issue that is being covered, though we're not reviewing it this time, is Off-Road Challenge, an off-road racing game in the tradition of Super Off-Road complete with a similar upgrade system. We have imp on four tracks and the promise of a more extensive write-up in the next issue, so I'm saving it for that. No alt Zorans this issue in the now playing column, though we do get a write-up of Clay, Fighter, Clay Fighter Sculptor's Cut. 
wrapping up the issue in pack watch we have stills for turok 2 along with a first look at mortal kombat 4 and an announcement of the game boy color my pick of the issue this time is icky's wrecking balls this game was a lot of fun to play it feels like an underrated gem of the n64's library also generally the prices for it are pretty decent so i'd probably say that that's the consensus on this as well most people missed it because it wasn't tied to one of those big franchises which is a bummer because in the sense of that it didn't catch on at the time because the game plays really well solid controls and it's really fun and unlike forsaken 64 which also had pretty decent controls and was fun to play doesn't give me motion sickness now bomberman gb came really close to second for me because of how well it captured the vibe for lack of a better term of bomberman and moved it to the game boy the fact that it has link cable support works even better now next month i'm going to take a look at the past 12 months of as far as june 1995 to may 19, uh may 1996 and talk about how things were faring for everyone else in the video game industry Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the show, please like and subscribe. And also consider backing my Patreon. Patreon backers get episodes up to one week early of this show and any f future Let's Plays. Also, please consider backing my coffee. Uh, toss me a few bucks also helps support the show, and it's not a monthly obligation or anything like that. <laughs>